Well, salutations, kindred spirit, greetings, and welcome back to another weekly Wednesday magic lesson. And boy, I'm excited to share this one with you as I know this. I'm going to add a card trick to someone's repertoire that they'll be doing the rest of their life. And I know this because that's what happened to me when I learned it from Frank Garcia over 35 years ago. Yeah, via the Stars of Magic VHS video series, old school. I digress. Let's let's take a look at the trick in question. The trick I'm talking about, the gun trick. Check it out. Alrighty, so we're gonna do the gun trick. For that, we're gonna need a bullet, and for that, I'm thinking Ace of Spades. We're also gonna need a target, and for that, we're gonna get a card from a shuffle deck. Yeah, from a shuffle deck. I'll just stop at random, and you remember that card. I'm gonna use that bullet, which I load into the weapon, yeah, into the into the gun, and take one shot to find one card. And if that's your card, well, that's that. So yeah, the gun trick, that's a strong commercial piece that never fails to leave a strong impression. And we, we're gonna thank Peter Kane for this notion. He introduced the shooting joker back in the 1960s. It was his idea to shoot cards out of a deck with bullets. I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain his method and also the one that I prefer and used, which is Ken Krenzel's method for the magic bullet or the gun trick. And this method is going to use a pharaoh shuffle. Now I am going to explain a method that doesn't use the pharaoh, but if you want to do it the best way, you'll need to you'll need to know how to pharaoh shuffle a deck. So let's take a minute and talk about the pharaoh shuffle. Okay, so here is a brief tutorial on how I handle the pharaoh shuffle, the pharaoh shuffle. And note, this is just how I choose to handle it. There are lots of approaches, and if you are a new student, I will advocate checking out some other tutorials. Maybe take a look at Ed Marlowe's Pharaoh Shuffle Manuscript from the Revolutionary Card Technique series. That's a great resource. But here's how I begin the move. The deck is held in straddle grip. That's between the first finger and the pinky. It straddles the deck. The second and third finger are uh, on the long side with the thumb at the opposite long side. As you cut the deck with the opposite hand, you're going to mimic that straddle grip, but different pressure points will be applied as we start the shuffle. The, the right hand applies downward pressure with the forefinger. Again, these pressure points are light. The pinky provides support and a little upward pressure coming from the bottom. The left forefinger pushes that corner of the deck. That'll keep everything square here. Uh, tap the deck. This is important to keep everything square. And we're gonna begin the shuffle from the corners. So I'm gonna bring this right hand packet against the forefinger, again, squaring both packets, keeping everything tight. And then those corners are where I begin the weave. And the weave kind of works its way down the pack as this uh, light pressure is applied. So, straddle grip, mimic position, right hand forefinger presses down, left hand pinky presses up, the thumbs applying the pressures towards the two fingers. The left forefinger applies pressure at the corner to keep the packet square. The right hand packet is butted against that forefinger to square both the corners before the weave is begun. And that's how you do the pharaoh shuffle. So yeah, that's how I handle the Pharaoh Shuffle. As mentioned, there are other approaches, other techniques that might serve you better. Go check out some of these resources, maybe other tutorials, or perhaps that Ed Marlowe Pharaoh book. It's a good one. And this segues us into the Ken Krenzel method for the gun trick or the magic bullet. Ken would apply the incomplete Pharaoh and use a secret finger break. And hey, let's just take a look at the full scoop. Here we are, magic bullet tutorial. So given the chance, I like to introduce the bullet trick or the gun trick with a flashy production of the bullet. And by the way, this is what they call aces in Las Vegas and in poker games, they're referred to as bullets. So that's a nice tie in. This production is Daryl's Hot Shot Cut. I'm not going to teach this production today, but hey, my good friend Jason Maher taught it yesterday on his channel. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Y'all can go check that out. And with your bullet in play, we're now ready to pick a target. The target is chosen from an incomplete straddle pharaoh. That's an incomplete straddle pharaoh right there. The idea is that the cards are not squared, they're not, uh, the shuffle's not finished, it's incomplete, and the straddle 
is is this when I when I cut the right hands packet I only cut about a third of the deck maybe a little bit more and then it is woven into the bigger portion so the bigger portion straddles the smaller portion which is left uh, out jogged or incomplete above the lower portion it's this situation that's held in your left hand dealing grip with the pinky near the inner right corner. This is in preparation for a break, which happens after your spectator says stop at one of the upper cards. So a little bevel helps the, sec the selection process here as your finger plucks through the upper end. And you do this as you invite your spectator to stop you anytime. Wherever you stop, you're going to open it up so they can get a look. But the real secret here is your little finger, the left finger is going into that corner there and it's going to hold a break as you allow the upper cards to go flush. So the break is held in the lower section, not the upper section. Your spectators just see this. You'll follow this procedure by turning the deck into the gun and that's just swiveling the upper half 90 degrees. I'm going to recommend you lock in about a fourth of the pack here. So if you can get used to doing that uniformly, you'll have better pressure on the production. And that is done, the production, you just load the ace into the gap. Again, your spectators will just see this action, but it's going right into that little finger break, which can be released after the ace goes in. The ace is pushed up until you feel it butt against the card. So going about this far, you'll feel it hit it. And stop there as you prepare, to, uh, you know, prepare your audience for the shot. When you're ready to shoot the card, it's your second finger that flicks sharply against this ace. And note, I have a wand here. I always try and aim at a target because when you shoot the cards out of a deck, they can just go, they can take off crazy. So if you give yourself a target, you have a chance on stopping the card in a theatrical situation. Just a little worker tip for the gun trick. But yeah, that's how you do it. Straddle grip, uh, spectator selection, get that little finger break, insert the ace in there, make your gun and thump it out. And that is the Ken Krenzel approach to the magic bullet. All right, so this is a unique approach to the gun trick that has some advantages. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's possible to do the gun trick without a faro. If you have a good riffle shuffle, you can use this technique. You can also use multiple selections. In this demonstration, I'm going to use the two red aces, so that's an advantage, multiple cards. There's no finger breaks, so after the selections are made and replaced, you don't have to hold any breaks, that's a plus. I guess if there's a minus is that you have to have a way to control the cards to the top of the deck. So I used a multiple shift to get those two cards to the top. You're going to use your favorite method, we're not going to get into that now. But be it one card or two cards or more, those cards are atop the pack. And then we build our gun, I like to build it with the pharaoh, I'll explain the riffle shuffle after this. But weaving, inner, an incomplete weave straddle situation with the upper half going into the bottom half. No breaks this time though. Well, how are we going to get the cards? It's the loading procedure, which is done this way from the audience's view. This is what they're going to see. Here's what you see. The ace gets loaded under the uppermost cards of the deck, but above the selection. And you do this just by brushing the bullet, the ace, above the selected card, below the top cards. You'll feel it click, and then you can push up, and you're now ready to shoot that card out with that, with that flick. Now we're ready to repeat. So we can go right into the second selection here, just claiming our second bullet. Again, your audience sees this, but you're doing this, loading it in, butting it up, and firing the card out. And that is another approach to Peter Kane's shooting joker. This is this was described in John Rockerbomber's card fixes as the Zen two-card shooter, and we're gonna give Paul Diamond credit for uh, shooting more than one. So there's some options for you. All right, so now you have a couple of options for the magic bullet. I, I recommend and prefer the first one with the incomplete pharaoh and the little finger break. It's a killer, it's a winner. But maybe you need to do multiple selections or maybe you like to do the riffle shuffle. The choice is yours. You do you, I'll do me. Along the way, we'll make the world go round. But hold on, we're not done yet. I want to share a bonus item with you. This is a pharaoh related item. It's a little more advanced and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, this is a clip I shot I tried to shoot it for YouTube and TikTok, but I couldn't get it done in under a minute for shorts for YouTube. TikTok, I got three minutes, so <clears throat> long story short, this clip is a minute and five seconds. It's the close I could get it, but uh, I'll discuss it in a moment. Why don't we take a look at the thing? Here is Marlowe's Miracle Aces, Estimation Aces. In this clip, I'll show you the best way, the best way to cut to the four aces, the four aces from a shuffled deck. 
Begin with a multiple shift to control the aces to the top, and then follow that with an overhand shuffle run, nine cards. That'll position the aces 10th through 14th. That means if you do a pharaoh shuffle, yeah, a pharaoh shuffle, which interweaves every card with every other card, follow that with a slough off as a cut to position the cards 20 through 28th. So now it's just a little simple estimation. You cut around that area, you should find an ace. Now one more, one less, you're gonna miss, so be careful. I'll up the ante here by just trying to toss the ace into the deck, finding its brother. Yeah, that's ace number two, and again, one more, one less, no luck. Third ace, bad hand, no luck. Take note, there's no crimps or short cards or weird gaffs. This is just one guy with too much free time. Bad hand, no luck. Just pure estimation as we try to find ace number three. And again, one more, one less. We would have missed that thing. The last one comes out one-handed, just because I can. That's about 24 minus the three, 20. Yeah, that's the one, the ace of clubs, and that's that. Is there any questions? So yeah, that's Marlowe's Miracle Aces. It's a great Pharaoh trick, and that's why I'm showcasing it here today. If you'd like to learn it, I am offering this tutorial to my members. It's an exclusive member tutorial. We just dropped it this afternoon, so if you'd like some advanced learning, go join us there, and I'll leave some links in the description below on how you can join my membership section. And for those of you that have made that choice, hey, let me thank you very much for helping my dream come true. This is one piece of the puzzle that allows me to do this work that I'm doing right now and hopefully we're all benefiting from this situation. So all that's left is for me to quit rambling. I'll do that now. Oh, one more thing I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for your time and attention, your energy. Gracias. Appreciated. And that's going to be a wrap. Ciao for now, y'all. I'll see you on the next one.